Hi everybody, I hope you are all well during this festive time. It is December, it is the 29th of December. We are so, so close to New Year's. And I just wanted to record one last YouTube video for wine diaries for dummies. I have not been consistent at all. I have not been consistent. I have had quite a challenging, difficult year academics wise and also just like figuring out myself and growing you know to become a young adult it's been quite a lot so the only time when i really probably get to like you know chilling and like having a glass of bread or whatever it's probably during festive season so i've had quite a few glasses not quite a few quite a lot of glasses of wine throughout the course of the year of the different bottles of red wine that i have been tasting throughout but majority of them are quite similar in taste and whatnot so it's not much that we have missed out on in terms of episodes and in terms of new content and whatever i'm not too sure what the channel holds for like future content creation could be white wine next you know that we could be reviewing it could be quite a multitude of um you know different drinks you know to review maybe you might even like just diverge completely from like you know drinks to something else entirely the only thing that i can say that i'm appreciative for is for the viewers who have stayed even if it's not like constant viewing or whatever the few subscribers that are here i love you guys and i will remember you guys throughout the course of it all i don't plan on being famous or whatever i do this entirely for my own like you know diarising on social media and growth on social media but it really does make me happy to know that there are people who are interested in that growth as well so before further ado let us get into it so today we have Neith Lingshif Estates Wine Cabernet Sauvignon 2021 I assume this is a wine from Stellenbosch yet again and it is found in the Neith Lingshif Estate. It is um, fermented there and it is grown and made there. Not 2021, excuse me, 2019. And Neath Lingshif Estate was established in 1692 as the bottle states. And if you just look at the scenery, it looks quite like a typical, you know, wine farm, just like rows and rows of grapes you know being grown and quite just like the you know mediocre used setting we are quite to when it comes to growing wine here we are told of the expected taste of the wine they tell us that they are historic urban estates and it is marked by an avenue of stone pines and that it's outside the town of Stellenbosch and there is technology and tradition that is made with fine wines with an authentic sense of place and then the wine here with regards to rating it and with regards to tasting it it is ranked in you know the little sections that they've given us they seem to have given us two four six seven sections of ranking uh if you can zoom in a little bit closer to the label we can see they have style mentioned there among some of them and they also have soil, climate, vineyards, winemaking, flavor and food suggestion and pairing. So style, full bodied, dry red wine, typical Cabernet Sauvignon and the soil, they mentioned that it is grown, the grapes are grown in decomposed granite and sandstone, climate is mild and wet winters with dry summers typical of south african climate that is what we expect and we have vineyards that are west facing slopes and that pays um you know quite importance when it comes to the facing of the slopes when it it is with reference to growing the grapes you know are we east facing are we west facing you know that all has to do with the sun and how it reaches you know the sun exposure the uv exposure how it reaches the grapes and how it plays in you know the moisture retention of the grapes and also just like the overall health of the growing of the grapes to make sure that we get the full you know taste of the fermented grapes once it's time to drink the wine 
We also have the wine making, which is the section that they mentioned, where it's harvested by hand during March. March is summertime, so that makes much sense. It's, you know, dry, um, not much rain or whatever. Everything has just, you know, sort of, you know, fully developed throughout the whole season. And we are ready to taste the wine during March. And for the flavor, they tell us that there is blackberries, cherries, vanilla, and spice that we can expect. Typically, again, with Cabernet Sauvignon, we can pair them with red, with roast lambs. You can also pair it with, you know, salads at times, you know, spicy salads at times. You can pair it with fish. Here yeah, they mention um, roast, they mention game fish, they mention quinoa salad, spicy quinoa salad. And the wine is also vegan friendly. And the percentage of alcohol for the ones who are interested is 14%. 750 milliliter bottle not that it matters much but you will actually find that there are bigger bottles of wine out there lately if you go to Woolworths you'll see that there are like one liter bottles of wine so it is kind of becoming a thing we just stick to our standard 750 milliliters all right so on to the tasting we go we are gonna do the same process as per usual we're gonna pour up until the rim of the wine glass which is our indicator as to when we should stop Nicely stop here. And by observation again of the color of the wine, as I bend my wine glass, I can see it's quite transparent in color. I can see the redness and transparency. That means I'm not quite expecting a wine that is quite strong in, you know, the alcohol content. I'm not expecting a wine that's gonna be quite bitter to my tongue. <clears throat> based on the transparency color i'm expecting a wine that's going to be quite prominent in cherries and also in berry flavor i think there will be quite a burst of spices in this wine and i think it's going to be a good wine actually yeah i'm quite hopeful oh and as i smell it too like i don't know if it's like ethanol or whatever or the sulfates but like that aroma it's not strong to the nose. You know how sometimes you'll smell like a red wine and it's just like to the nose, like and it just stays, the smell just stays on the bridge of the nose. It's not like that here. It tastes, it smells very sweet, you know, it just smells very berry-like, like a berry fusion type of dry red. All right, let's taste. Mm. Just as expected. This is a very good wine. Salem Bosch, man. Yo. Really, really, really good wine. It just as expected. You know, they mentioned here that um <clears throat> we can expect blackberries, cherries, vanilla, and spice. And as I say, berry fusion, that's literally all I taste here. Yeah, I can taste, you know, like berries. I can just taste a lot of like sweetness coming through, you know? And the spice also is not too overpowering. It's more so like um, a sweet kind of spice, maybe like a hint of like, um, I don't want to say cinnamon. Kind of just like a, a, a hint of like a, a spicy yet like sweet, um, you know, aroma spice. But I'm not too sure, I'm not like quite educated when it comes to spices. So I have no idea which spices those may be. This is a really, really, really good wine. It tastes really good. And it also just does not smell overpowering at all. I feel like it's quite um, reasonable for its packaging its pricing and what it also promises <clears throat> this wine costed 140 rand if i'm not mistaken and you can find it at any liquor store it's a Neithling chef estate wine um of course it will be probably exclusive to some specific stores but given the easy accessibility of this one you shouldn't really have a problem with finding it i'm not too sure if does sell it but i'm pretty sure they do 
this one is definitely giving me like a a plum you know hue as well when i look at it so i think it's very much you know plum driven you know there's quite a lot of sweetness coming through there and it tastes like plumminess you know the after tan and you know the taste of it on my palette i can just taste berries more so strawberries are really coming through though as well blackberry is prominent as well i think more so though not the black blackberries but more so like the lighter colored ones because of this light color of the wine i'm assuming it's not quite you know a berry that is quite dark in color which will cause it of course to have a much more stronger you know odor to the wine and also a stronger you know taste to the palette i really really like this one i think it's really really good i would like solid rated um <clears throat> Let me take one more sip, you know, let me just, let me just, let me just check that little, let me just check it again, you know, like, you mustn't be quick to wait because you never know, you never know. As I drank it as well, I inhaled within, you know, the glass to take, to take, to taste how the, you know the fumes fumes if i should say how they feel when i inhale and again they're not strong to the palate and to the nose as well so not overpowering it's not such as niederberg barone where you drink it and all you just smell as alcohol you know it's not like that this is a really sophisticated classy wine that you can just drink with the mm. girls where you can get um a great buzz without even having you know, the odor of like the alcohol or the sulfates or whatever. Um, I would definitely rate it like um, an eight. Yeah, definitely an eight. This is a really great wine. And I would best pair it with probably, probably anything except for salad. I don't imagine myself eating salad with this wine. In fact, any wine, unless it's white wine, but we're not going there yet, we're still on beds. So definitely an 8, I definitely do enjoy it a lot and I just love the smoothness of it, I love the, you know, just the, it feels good, you know, after drinking this wine it feels good, you wouldn't even say that I had a sip of alcohol, I was like, oh wow, is this juice or something? Literally, but it's a really, really, really great wine. So thank you so much everybody for tuning in yet again, <sighs> we made it. 2023 we made it we're done 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 the race is in the past we just look forward now we look to the future now and the endeavors that come thereafter thank you so much for being a part of this journey for me just exploring you know um wine tasting exploring like a mini passion of mine that i have you know um also just the horticulture of it all um, I really found it really quite interesting to search wines and like being inspired by the Netflix movie um, The Somali, I think that's what it was called, I'm not too sure, I think it was called The Somali but being inspired by that Netflix movie on top of like the interest that I had in wines it just all like solidified everything on top of also my aunt, she's just a wine fanatic it just solidified everything and I just couldn't make this last video i guess without like those little branches that like played a role in me making this last red wine video so without you know further wasting of time have a great year the rest of the year at least drink responsibly for new year's eve and we will meet again for a new part of our series a new completely different playlist if it might be so could be white wines next could be something completely different nevertheless thank you so much for the support keep safe babies